Good morning. Welcome to our Wesley Methodist Church Ramban Sunday service this morning. Brothers and sisters, friends and visitors, we are so glad you can join us from your home. And we pray that you will have a meaningful time with us this morning. We'll have a moment of silent meditation before we start. Please respond to the call to worship. Praise God who loves us all. Praise God who is full of mercy and compassion. Praise God who loves us well. Praise God who creates honesty and justice. Praise God who invites us to love. Praise God who loves through us and our actions. Let us pray together our opening prayer. Loving, Loving God, love, love through us as we worship your holy name. Love through us as we listen for your holy word. Love through us as we live your teachings and offer your love to our world. In your majestic name we pray. Amen. Simply come, longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. Search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you All about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the things
crowns before the Lamb of God and sing, you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Like never before, oh my. 
your gifts. We allow ourselves to be rattled and shaken by the circumstances on our lives. We lose sight of you and strive to make do with what we have. Forgive us, we pray. As we confess our sins in thought, word, and or deed, may your redemptive presence flood our lives that we may praise your name forevermore. Amen. Hear the words of assurance. Full of mercy and compassion, God knows us to the core of our very being and loves us through all of our days. Now we come to a time for prayer and intercession. We have four items to pray for. Uh, first one will be for ourselves. The second one will be for the family. The third will be for our country. And the fourth will be for Italy. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. Pray for biblical wisdom, the ability to apply knowledge and intelligence in order to live a good life. Pray that we will grow in relationship with God, live in reverence and awe of him, and obey his word. Now I invite you to pray for yourself, for a growing relationship with God, and to live in reverence and fear of him, learning to obey God in every way. Let us pray. What the second item? He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. Pray that families will remember and ponder God's works and wonders in their family history 
and in their personal lives with gratitude and praise. Pray that every family member will experience His grace and compassion. Please pray for your family members, that they will experience grace and compassion of God in their lives, and they themselves will also remember the history of what uh, their family has gone through in their relationship with God. Do name your family members as you pray for them. Please pray. Now let us pray for Malaysia. Over the past couple of weeks, daily new cases of COVID-19 have consistently exceeded 3,000. And as of Friday, the numbers had gone up to 5,725. Let us pray. Lord, we pray for our nation. The daily infected cases have been on the average of 3,000 and above. And this is frightening. And as of Friday, the number had gone up to 5,725. Lord, the numbers have become very much harder for the government medical team to handle as they crowd into hospitals and spaces becomes limited. We do pray, Lord, that with the SOP as well as the MCO set by the government, our people, Lord, will learn to live with care and concern and consideration for one another, that they will limit their going in and going out except for necessities. We pray for those people who are working that you keep them safe. We pray for the frontline medical staff as they are being overwhelmed by the numbers that have come in. Indeed, Lord, some people have been told to quarantine at home as the number of beds are being kept for the more serious and urgent cases. We know, Lord, that the medical staff, doctors and nurses, as well as ambulance drivers, receptionists, and those people who check temperature and do tests are being overwhelmed by the numbers that keep rising. We pray, O oh Lord, that with what the government is doing, that the numbers will come down slowly but surely. Help our people, Lord, to be obedient, Lord, to the standards that are being set as they are set to keep us safe and to keep us away from COVID as much as possible. We pray, O oh Lord, that you protect our people and you will have the vaccination brought in to control, Lord, the spread of the COVID. We commit our people into your hands. We pray, Lord, that you will help the medical staff, Lord, to be able to get, get enough rest to handle their work. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Our fourth item Pray for Italy. Last week, her Prime Minister resigned after losing the majority when a party defected. Pray for God's will to be done in Italy as politicians negotiate to form a new government. Let us pray. Lord, Italy has been destabilised with a change in government and this is during a pandemic. They have an average of 8,000 over cases, though at the height they had 40,000 cases a day. We pray, Lord, that somehow the different parties will come to negotiate and be able, Lord, to form a new government with a new Prime Minister. We pray, Lord, that in doing this, they will avoid an election 
for with an election it brings people together and the danger of increasing infection is there at their height lord with 40 over thousand cases a day that is truly frightening and we are very glad lord that the numbers have come down but even so lord we pray that because of the political situation it will not spike again be with Italy, we pray, Lord. Guide them in their decision. Guide the party, guide the different parties and guide the people, Lord, so that Italy will come through this, Lord, without increasing number of COVID cases. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. The reading today is taken from Psalm 111 and Mark chapter 1, verses 21 to 28. Psalm 111 Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear Him. He remembers His covenant forever. He has shown His people the power of His works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of His hands are faithful and just. All His precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is, is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Mark chapter 1 verses 21 to 28. And they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished by, at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out, with a loud voice came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the word of God. Dear family in Wesley Stramban and Taman Nujong, good morning to you. I did not expect to have to speak to you once again through the screen, but MCO 2.0 is keeping us all at home, even as the pandemic rages on. But as you heard the scriptures being read this morning, I know that God wants to give us a vision of himself and that that vision will transform the way we live our lives. So I want to invite you, come let us go to God in prayer. Our dear Father, even as we present ourselves to you this morning, Lord, water our hearts with your word. Speak into our hearts about who you are, who you want to be in our lives. And Lord, transform the way we live. We thank you, Lord, that you are always present in our midst. We invite you to do your work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Friends, this is the fourth Sunday in Epiphany. Epiphany was a time when Christ was revealed to the larger world. And since then, the church has celebrated the season of Epiphany where we open our eyes again to how God has revealed himself in different ways, in different situations, so that we don't forget who he is. Psalm 111 declares the majesty and glory of God, remembering the Exodus experience. A difficult time that the people went through, a dark time. And then how God also brought them into the entry into the promised land. All the while, drawing near into their lives, rescuing them, even as they took twists and turn. A God who did great and wondrous works for their lives. In the second passage is a different point in history during Jesus' time when he walked into the synagogue and as he spoke and he taught, everybody was amazed. This is a teaching with authority, with power. And later, as he healed the man possessed by an evil spirit, it was God walking into this one man's life, overturning the whole order of things. This is our God, genuine, compassionate, involved in the lives of his people, whether they be individuals or a whole group of people or generations. My friends, our God is unrattled and unstoppable. Say that again. Many of us cannot see that about God because often the things that are happening around us churn up the clouds and the dust that we cannot see that God remains the same, unrattled and unstoppable. You know, uh, the cry of the Reformation or a slogan of the Reformation was to God alone be the glory. My question to us this morning is this. Does Jesus stun us with his glory? For many of us, our God has become small or we live as if we have no God. Thomas D. Parker had this to say, to live as if there were no God is to live in a space so small for our souls to even grow or to flourish. Many of our souls cannot flourish because we are living in a space that is squeezing God out of our lives. My friends, it is a time, it is a time of shaky thrones, people in power, overnight or long term. They are unstable. The thrones that we see around, whether in organizations, in nations, in governments, in churches, they seem shaky because they are held by people who sometimes are fallen. And you know, we find more and more our lives becoming unstable. Everything was shaken. 2020 and 2021 holds up for us in our face, our frailty, our helplessness as the pandemic rages on. I don't know about tomorrow. It's a song we used to sing during my time in MYF, but today it echoes loudly and it taunts us. Wearing down passion, wearing down courage and even faith among the strong even. And really, it is a time of 
prolonged uncertainty. It's a time of prolonged helplessness. And it's a pro time of prolonged pandemic that shakes everything. More than that, there is a growing confidence deficit. We have lost our confidence in leadership in general, whether it be the nation, whether it be at the workplace, whether it be at the church, we lose, have lost confidence. We lose trust in the people who lead us. Even in the church, toward the church and the answers it gives us in times like this, sometimes we have a confidence deficit. You know, sometimes we feel the church, and I'm not talking about our church, I'm talking about church in general, is not scratching where it itches. You know, people have questions, people have pain, people are uncertain, afraid. And sometimes, as the church, the answers we give are like, you know, going above our head. And we have lost confidence. But what is more dangerous is that there is a confidence deficit toward the Lord who seems silent. Especially as we see the desecration the pandemic has caused, not just to our lives, to well-being, to our work, ability to earn, and many more things. How do we come back? How do we walk back and regain confidence in God? You know, often these words, do you remember, always invites us to recollect and go back to somewhere, some point in time. Now, if you look at Psalm 111, verses 1 and 2, it says, I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the council of the upright and in the assembly. In the midst of all the people, I will extol him. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. The way to come back and to see God in his rightful place is to ponder the word Hebrew word for ponder is to study it is to take apart it is to remember to go back to that place and refresh our minds who and what God has been and I want to invite us if we were just to scroll back our own year you will see the fingerprints of God all over our lives all over our nation even in the midst of the an instability. God has been at work. If not, we would not have survived. God has been at work. If not, we will not have come through these dark times whole. My friends, Psalm 101 is an invitation for the people of God to remember how God worked how God was vigilant and was actively working during the Exodus, a time of great darkness, during the time when the people didn't know how to go into the promised land. After 40 years of wandering, God's vigilance and fighting for them brought them to that place. Later on, as they were exiled because of their rebelliousness, God was walking with them bringing them back again at the second exodus. S similarly, Mark chapter 1 is an invitation for us to remember Jesus' emphatic war against the strongholds that hold people down and how God works to set his people free. As we remember these two points in history, we can encourage our hearts to know that God is enthroned, that he is unrattled, the earth may shake, 
the pandemic may rage, we may lose all things, but God is on the throne working out His plan for us. Whose voice are you hearing? That was the message two weeks ago. Do you hear what I hear? Or have we been blinded? Or have we been hearing other things that take us off course? Last week we heard that we need to hear double, listen again and again that it will move us. The second listening will move us to action. And if we know these truths about God, it should lead us to live life in a very different way. Psalm 111, if you look at verses 3 to 9, I hope you have your Bibles open with you. Glorious and majestic are his deeds. His righteousness endures forever. He has caused wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. Now this portion from verses 3 to 5 is talking about when the people were struggling as slaves in the darkness of slavery, God gave them mighty miracles, but at the same time drew so near to them as they came out of the exodus. When they had no food, he was so compassionate to draw near and to minister and to give them food to eat. Verses 6 to 9 talks more about how he brought them into the promised land. He has shown his people the power of his works, given them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever, enacted in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. This is talking about as he led them into the promised land. They had to face many obstacles as well. And again, God was doing great works. And at the same time, giving them precepts, you know, guiding them how they should live their lives as they begin anew. And all this because he brought us back from slavery to become his people. My friends, as we look at this passage, and then we look at Mark chapter 1, where the people were first amazed with what kind of teaching is this? So unlike the teachers of our law. Then they were even further surprised when the evil spirits begin to speak through the man and said, what do you want with Jesus? us, Jesus? Have you come here to destroy us? And that was when Jesus said, get out of him. What is this? This is a new thing for the people because they hadn't experienced God walking into their lives, setting people free, overturning lives up, right side up. And my friends, this, this is the God I would like to highlight three things about. Firstly, you can see from these two passages, He is the God who remembers. Verses 5, verses 9 of Psalm 111. says he remembers the covenant he made with us. That he would be our God. We would be his people. He made the covenant to love us. Going to the extent of even rescuing us. And accompanying us as we journey. Started then, continues till today. Verses 3 to 9 also speak about God's people and their frailty, how they cried out to him again and again, how they needed his intervention and his protective involvement in their lives. And he came through. He remembered their frailty and he was close by. In the Mark passage, you see 
God who remembers his people's imprisonment. You know, from the powers that overwhelm them. They cannot help themselves. They cannot break free. But God breaks them free. He is a God who remembers his covenant. He is a God who remembers our frailty and our imprisonment. My friends, that is the first thing that I would like to highlight from today's passages. Second thing that I would like to highlight, that he is the Lord ruler over our stories. You know, he refuses to abandon his people to their own thing, to do their own thing. You know, God refuses to abandon his people and he accompanies them in the twists and turns of the exodus and the entry. You know, he brought them out from slavery and yet very quickly they turned away. And so they had to wander for 40 years. But he, God went with them. He accompanied them with a pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. The God who refuses to let us be abandoned. This is his story of journeying with us through the unfolding sagas of our life. Even when he needed to punish his people, he was there with them. That is the beautiful picture of our God, walking into exile with his people, bringing them back. The other thing about the Lord of our stories is that his authorship, he is the one writing our story, marking out our race. The things that happen to us or the things uh, that we go through, he allows it all the time, unwilling to allow distortions to his piece of work in us. He works in such a way that the script will always turn out the way he authors it. My friends, not only is he Lord over our stories, he is the one who is unrattled in his rule. Verse 3 of Psalm 111 says, Glorious and majestic are your deeds. Our God is a royal God. And no one has seen works like his. We cannot box him or pin him down. The unboxability of God and the unforgettable works of God are beyond speaking about. Glorious. And you know, this is the same God then and today. More than that, he's authentic. And he's transformational because he refuses to let us remain where we are. He's a powerful presence, as we saw in Mark, who walks into our lives and changes things around for the better. And then you see a refrain coming out of Psalm 111 in verse 3, verse 5, verse 8 and verse 9. Verse 3 says this, his righteousness endures forever. Verse 5, it says he remembers his covenant forever. Verse 8, it says his precepts are trustworthy and they are established forever and ever. And lastly, it says that he has ordained his covenant forever. This foreverness for God talks about God being not fickle. God being solid and permanent, God not changing his mind. Nothing will shake him from shepherding our lives, from compassionately and righteously shepherding us in our journey, calling us back. Now, when we look at these three things, God who is unrattled in his rule, God who is Lord over 
all our stories and God who remembers us, not abandons us, then we should be seeing him enthroned and unrattled no matter what happens. But my friends, God is near and unstoppable. But often we cannot see it, can we? Everything that unfolds speaks about his immanence. But often we feel God is so far away. We are clouded by the doubts, the uncertainties. We are clouded by the pain or the disabilities that take place. We are clouded by the fears in our lives. You know, um, and then we think God has stopped. That God has abandoned. I was about to say, you know, that was two years ago in September, in the first week of September 2019. I was in Cambodia in the midst of ministering to the people. And one of the mornings there, I still had three more days to be in Cambodia. One of the mornings, I had a phone call. And usually, I don't answer phone calls when I'm overseas. But I took that call and I realized it was uh, my doctor. And she was giving me the results and she said, you know, you have cancer. And when I heard that, and then she told me, oh, it's only stage one. And uh, don't worry, but you know, the fact that I was given that news, I put the phone down and I continued the work for the day. But that night when I timed to be alone, suddenly the thoughts began to flow. Oh, I have cancer. What does this mean? Will I be able to continue doing this ministry? Will I be able to travel like this? Will it mean, is it going to be a bad kind of uh, journey for me? What is ahead? I couldn't see and I began to feel something clouding me. And then I felt the urge, stop and pray. So I was alone in my room and as I began to pray, I wanted to play a song and I took my phone to play a Christian song and in my feed, I saw these words, a song for those with cancer. And I'm like, huh? And I played that song. The song was, raise a hallelujah. Stand against the enemy. Don't let the giants make you fear. And as I prayed and raised a hallelujah to the Lord, I began to see him as he was. He is the God who charters my life, who charts my story, you know. And yes, I'm frail. Yes, I'm helpless. Yes, I don't know the outcome. But I can see him on his throne. My friends, God has not stopped. Right from the Exodus, even before that, to Jesus' time, until now, God has not stopped. He has always drawn near into our lives. Ever gracious, ever compassionate, ever mindful, ever providing for his people, for you and I. This is our God. We cannot live as a God has stopped. His powerful and miraculous actions continue unabated today. And he continues sustaining his people today. You know, it is the voice of the enlightenment skeptics that has shaped all our thinking to think, oh, God doesn't care about me. Oh, God has stopped working miracles. God cannot give us breakthroughs. We will be overcome. So many of us end up only believing in half a Jesus. We don't allow him to be on the throne, the big God, the glorious and majestic God that he is. God has not stopped. And that only means two things for us. 
First, that we need to live large. What do I mean? We live our ordinary lives, our weak and frail lives, but we live being open to something, someone greater than us who will work in the midst of our ordinary experience, who will give us breakthroughs, who will give us miracles, who will carry us when we cannot walk. That's what he has been doing for his people all the while. It's about not boxing God into the moles that we have confined him in. God is at work and we need to live conscious that he's at work and he has drawn near. My friends, we need to allow the cloud to settle and live large, not live small, pathetic lives. And lastly, we, it means that we need to live unrettled. You know, many things rattle us. This pandemic certainly has and increasingly making more and more people feel stunted, depressed, incapable. But I want to say this, to live unrattled means we need to allow the cloud to settle so that we can see clearly. The scriptures call us to take on a posture. Verse 10 of Psalm 111 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. It is taking on a posture where we put God in his place and we allow the cloud to settle so that it doesn't cloud him. You know, my friends, I, this posture is, a, I call it a posture of soul shushing, you know, shh, be still my soul, to let the dust settle so that we can see God in charge of our lives, although we may be struggling with disabilities, keeping our eyes on the throne, God on his throne, and knowing that nothing will shake God's purposeful script for our stories, for our lives. My friends, the challenge this morning is so that you and I, as we see God's glory and majesty, as we see God who draws near every point in history to his people, to his uh, each individual, we need to live large. We need to live unrattled. We need to know God has not stopped. I remember each one of us and I think about you even when, you know, during CMCO when only half the church came back and many of the seats were empty. I can see your face there. You were not there, but I can see you there. And as I remember each one of you in Wesley, and for many of you in Tamanujung, whom I know as well, and many whom I don't know, for each one of you, I want right now to hand you back into the hands of this majestic and glorious God, the God who remembers us, the God who is Lord over our stories. The God who cannot be rattled in his rule. And I want to, you to know that God is doing everything to work out his story in our lives. You and I need to respond by living large. You and I need to respond by living unrattled. So friends, as I hand you back, let me pray. Father, in our weakness, in our cloudedness, we ask you to let the dust settle, to remember again who you have been and who you are and who you will be and help us to live differently, to live giving space for you to work, living large and to live unrattled, not as if we are a people with no God, because you have not stopped. So we thank you, God, for your work in our lives. 
touch each one and minister to us and raise us to live the lives you have called us to live. In, in the name of our dear Lord Jesus, I pray all this. Amen. God bless you, my friends. Thank you, Annette, for reminding us again who our God is. The one who is unrattled, the one who is unstoppable. And so to remind us and hold this with us through the week, let us say the key verse together and take this verse as we go into the coming week from Psalm 111 verse 2. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. And in response, let us sing together the potter's hand, a reminder that God's hand is upon us to shape us to shape the events of our lives for good and in His love.
we want to welcome all of you joining us from wherever you are. And we're so glad that we can worship together even if we are not physically in the same space. Let us continue to pray that this pandemic and the, will be over soon and that the numbers will come down so that we can come together to worship in person again. As we are not meeting in person, we would want to encourage you to uh, give your pledges, your gifts, your offerings, either through online banking, or if you need to bank it in, please do so. But do remember to inform the church office. The email and telephone contacts are there in the bulletin. Let me share with you a couple more announcements. Bible reading plans are available to help us to read through the Bible. Uh, we have one that is by Sumaiwe Subang Methodist Church, and we want to thank them for their generous gift. And so if you need one, please contact the church office. The same with reading through the lectionary. These are Bible texts which are on for each Sunday and our preachers will preach through uh, one or more of these texts. So this will help you prepare for Sunday worship. Thirdly, the Lent meditations are available. And so please again contact the church office to get your hard copy of the Lent meditation and we would like to request a contribution of seven ringgit per copy if you are able to. On the same note, Lent begins with Ash Wednesday on the 17th of February. Plans are being made for a service to be held but online. More details and the registration will come out as soon as they are ready. So please be on the lookout for that. Through Lent, there will also be a weekly series conducted by Reverend Chiu Tao Yao and organized by the Institute for Christian Ministry. And this is on practicing holiness. What does it mean for us to be holy? What does living in holiness look like? And sometimes we ask ourselves, is it practical? Well, this series will help us to look at that and see how we can live holiness in our daily lives. So do check out the announcement in the bulletin and please register. Please take note that there is a charge of 50 ringgit for the whole series. Let us now make our commitment to God with the hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name, acknowledging that our God is all-powerful, our God is able, and our God is mighty, and it is to Him we give our allegiance. All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. <music>
receive the benediction. We belong to a God who is unrattled and unstoppable in his love and his plans for the world and for us. So go in peace to find God already present and at work in the world. And he invites us to join this work and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us and all our loved ones now and always. Amen. Thank you.